Episode 56 MC November 24, 2023 Drunk drivers slapped with fines after they make mistakes and fines for UK wood burners. California electrical grid may be strengthened by laws that could be a model for other states. The California Legislature's Assembly Bill 2700, AB 2700, and California Senate Bill 410, SB 410, ask utilities to forecast. HTTPS slash slash www canary me diameter com slash article slash transmission slash California's grid is hindering its climate goals can a new law fix it utm underscore source equals solar wake up and utm underscore campaign equals excerpts edited by Razep for brevity and clarity and relationship to residents against wood smoke emission particulates. A 501c3 nonprofit organization. Razep view. A strengthened electrical grid would allow more use of heat pumps which could replace indoor residential wood burning. California's grid is hindering its climate goals. Can a new law fix it? The state's grid isn't growing fast enough to support a surge of heat pumps. A new law offers a potential path forward and could be a model for other states. November 20, 2023. California's grid isn't growing fast enough to electrify buildings. A new law aims to speed up utility grid buildouts to meet these needs. Canary Media's Down to the Wire column tackles the more complicated challenges of decarbonizing our energy systems. A co-administrator of the National EV Charging Initiative is excited about SB 410, a new California law aimed at speeding up the state's grid buildout. There are years-long delays in energizing EV truck charging depots across California. Trucking and freight companies are trying to comply with California's Advanced Clean Fleets rule, which sets deadlines for converting hundreds of thousands of diesel trucks to zero emissions models over the next 12 years. Over the past year, Utility Pacific Gas and Electric has failed to deliver timely grid hookups to hundreds of commercial and multifamily buildings due to a combination of misaligned grid planning, supply and workforce shortages and the utilities focus on burying and hardening power lines to forestall grid-sparked wildfires. Grid constraints will threaten a whole host of other climate priorities as well, said a senior attorney with the Natural Resources Defense Council Climate and Clean Energy Program. It could stymie the push to convert buildings from fossil-fueled furnaces and water heaters to heat pumps, as is increasingly required under state building codes and emissions standards. Grid constraints could also restrict the role of distributed solar and battery systems, which studies indicate are vital to augment the utility-scale renewable energy resources that face their own interconnection bottlenecks on the state's high-voltage transmission grid. Truck charging depots can draw as much power as sports stadiums, he noted, but unlike a sports stadium, which the utility sees coming years if not decades in advance, it only takes six months to install dozens of high-voltage EV chargers in a parking lot. The supply chain disruptions of the past few years have lengthened the time it takes to secure critical grid gear like transformers from months to years, for example. Training and apprenticeship programs for utility line workers typically take four to five years to complete. That's why SB 410 orders the CPUC to come up with realistic standards for supply chains and workforce development, and then require utilities to do annual reporting. A recent study warned that California's major utilities will likely need to invest from $30 billion to $50 billion by 2035 to expand their distribution grids to enable the state's electrification goals, with EVs driving the majority of that demand. In May, Southern California Edison, the state's second-largest utility, filed its plans for a three-year rate case that includes extensive grid expansion and electrification targets based on more recent forecasts. Those plans were boosted by a state law passed last year, AB 2700, which explicitly orders the CPUC and utilities to build the latest EV growth forecasts into their grid expansion plans. PG&E filed for bankruptcy protection in January 2019, two months after one of its power lines failed in high winds and sparked a wildfire that killed 84 people and caused tens of billions of dollars in damages. It emerged from bankruptcy in 2020 still burdened by a portion of those liabilities, as well as heavy debt loads, and it has since focused much of its capital spending on a multi-billion dollar program of burying and hardening its grid to forestall future wildfires, reducing its capacity to connect new customers. PG&E triggered a new round of public outrage when it filed its new rate case proposal last month, in which it asked the CPUC to approve a 26% rate hike. The grid investments that California needs cannot be compared to the so-called gold-plating utility grid investment plans of past years. 
California is among the two dozen states that have decoupled electricity sales from utility revenue, meaning that the utility doesn't make more money when it sells more electricity or less money when it sells less. A 2022 study by Synapse Energy Economics found that between 2012 and 2021, EV drivers in the territories of PG&E, Southern California Edison and San Diego Gas and Electric have increased utility revenues more than they have increased utility costs. Allowing New York utilities to upgrade their grids for heavy-duty EV fleets could reduce overall utility customer bills compared to forcing fleet operators to take on the cost of grid upgrades themselves. Power Research Institute launched a program with utilities, major EV truck manufacturers, government agencies and regulators to map out hot spots of growing demand for EV charging, for example. The next step is to speed the energization of charging infrastructure and that's where SB 410 comes into play, both for California itself and as a model for other states. The National EV Charging Initiative is planning to introduce legislation modeled on SB 410 in states including Colorado, Illinois, New Jersey and New Mexico in the coming months. It's the states, not Congress, that regulate this sector. Utilities don't have the ability to invest in a timely manner. Ukraine. File photo. Polish truckers burn wood to keep warm as they block crossings at Ukrainian Colorado Springs Gazette. File photo. Polish truckers burn wood to keep warm as they block crossings at Ukrainian border near the village of Herben, Poland November 19. United States. PM 2.5 and racial disparities. Nature. Racial disparities in air pollution, nature human behavior nature. Inhaling unhealthy levels of fine particulate matter air pollution, less than 2.5 micrometers in diameter, PM 2.5, is a leading cause of death in the USA. California, San Francisco Bay Area. You're not to burn over Thanksgiving holiday weekend, Air Management Agency advises MSN the Bay Area Air Quality Management District is asking people to voluntarily refrain from burning wood over the Thanksgiving holiday this year. Canada, British Columbia. Wood debris burning taking place near Site C from December to March Energetic City BC Hydro notes that crews are clearing waste wood, where safe and practical, from the project area. Burning may occur in the Portage Mountain Quarry. Canada, British Columbia, Lake County. Lake Country to conduct prescribed burns on Spi and Cop, Kelowna News, Castanet.net residents in the area are reminded that there will be smoke and possibly flames visible from burning wood piles. Burning will only be conducted when United Kingdom, Birmingham. 1.5 million UK households face £300 fines over mistake in the home, Birmingham, live open fires and wood burning stoves have risen in popularity over recent years. But smoke from burning causes air pollution which harms the health of United Kingdom. Log burner rules could slap Britons with £300 fine. What you need to know, Personal Finance Daily Express the regulations state that owners are to face penalties for using wood burning stoves which don't meet the UK's standard for emissions. And not only. Europe. Air pollution levels still too high across Europe, remains top environmental health risk European Environment Agency, European Union. Between 2005 and 2021, the number of deaths in the EU attributable to fine particulate matter, PM2.5, one of the most damaging air pollutants PM2.5 and mortality. Particulate pollution from coal associated with double the risk of mortality than PM2.5 from fizz.org PM2.5 from coal has been treated as if it's just another air pollutant. But it's much more harmful than we thought, and its mortality burden has been. Razep view. Wood burning emits more CO2 and PM2.5 than coal burning. Where are the news articles about the more polluting wood burning in this festival of articles about coal burning? Are coal burning power plants still being replaced by the dirtier, more dangerous to human health, wood burning plants? China, coal pollution. Does PM2.5 accelerate the firm evolution? Evidence from 800 mm isoline in China, ScienceDirect.com, PM2.5 and coal burning solid fuel burning like wood burning. Wood burning emits more CO2 and PM2.5 than coal burning. Deaths from coal pollution have dropped, but emissions may be twice as deadly than New York Times. While fine particulate matter, known as PM2.5, is frequently examined for its health risks, the researchers found that inhaling those fine 
mortality risk from United States coal electricity generation, science, we defined coal PM2.5 as fine particulate matter associated with coal EGU sulfur dioxide emissions and estimated annual exposure to coal PM2.5 from. Deaths from coal pollution have dropped, but emissions may be twice as deadly the Seattle Times. While fine particulate matter, known as PM2.5, is frequently examined for its health risks, the researchers found that inhaling those fine coal particle pollution is twice as deadly as that from other sources, ZME science, 2.5 microns or less in diameter, significantly increases the risk of all tags. Particulate matter Particulate matter pollution PM, 2.5 U.S. coal plants killed 460,000 people between 1999 and 2020, common dreams after calculating annual exposure to fine particulates, known as PM 2.5, from 480 coal plants and examining Medicare death records, the researchers. Air pollution death toll from coal power underestimated Mirage News recent studies have suggested that exposure to fine particulate matter. PM2.5, containing sulfur dioxide, SO2, from coal burning emissions is more. PM2.5 and early PM2.5 sensors. Early announced MCERTS certification for both PM2.5 and PM10 air quality news PM plus gas systems. This means that the early particulate matter, PM2.5 and PM10, sensors have been independently verified for qualitative.